This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Thursday, February 6th, 2020. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. In a breaking news story from last night, around 11 p.m., two Anne Arundel County police officers attempted a traffic stop in Pasadena in the investigation of a suspicious death from earlier in the afternoon. An adult male was found inside of a residence in the 600 block of Newfield Road with possible trauma, and detectives had developed a person of interest in that case. Around 11 p.m., they attempted a traffic stop at Fort Smallwood Road and Pittman Road up in Pasadena. When the suspect in the car opened fire on one of the detectives, striking him, the detective was able to get to safety and seek medical attention while the second detective did continue the pursuit. The second detective did continue the pursuit into the Stony Beach community where they did exchange fire and a second detective was struck. The suspect is considered armed and dangerous and according to police, he's been described as a tall, six foot or taller, white skinny male with neck tattoos. Both officers were transported to an area hospital and they are said to be in stable conditions. As a precaution, the Anne Arundel County Public Schools have canceled all classes for all schools in the Northeast Cluster, while the suspect is still at large and a potential threat does exist. Police are urging residents in the area to be vigilant and to call 911 if they see anything suspicious like someone in their backyard. They also advise that there would be a large police presence in the area today, including helicopters. The names of the officers obviously have not been released just yet. This is a developing story out of Pasadena, Maryland, and you want to make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net a little bit later for more details as they come in. One story broke the site yesterday because of a surge of traffic, and that one was the story about the Anne Arundel County Police Department having arrested a teacher from South River High School for having sex with a student. Now, this investigation stems back to 2018, and on January 30th of 2019, more than a year ago, the school contacted the police about a possible sex offense. They said they had received information that the teenage victim and a teacher were seen together initiating inappropriate contact. Now, the teacher was identified as Meredith Susan Barry Martin, 37 years old, from Davidsonville, and she was immediately removed from the classroom. An investigation ensued. The Anne Arundel County Child Abuse Unit, as well as the Department of Social Services, did many interviews. And recently, the teenage victim submitted a written statement to the Anne Arundel County Board of Education confirming that Meredith Martin had inappropriate contact with him. Now, on January 16th of 2020, this year... The teenage victim was also interviewed by detectives where he did admit having numerous sexual encounters with the teacher in Davidsonville and Edgewater. They were able to obtain an arrest warrant charging Meredith Martin with five counts of sex abuse of a minor, eight counts of a fourth degree sex offense involving a person in the position of authority, and two counts of a perverted practice. She was arrested yesterday and taken into custody without incident and released on her own recognizance. Police are asking if there are any other victims or anybody that has any information about this incident or others to contact them at 410-222-4733, and that is the Child Abuse Unit, or if you want to remain anonymous, 410-222-4700. You may want to go over to the Capitol. They do have some more information about the allegations against Meredith Martin. And in some better school news, three county elementary schools have been honored by the Maryland State Department of Education with awards signifying their exceptional work with gifted and talented students. Belvedere, Edgewater, and Pasadena Elementary Schools each earned the Excellence in Gifted and Talented Education Award for their outstanding efforts over a 27-month period. Now, these three schools actually make up nearly 25% of all of the schools statewide that received that award. Pretty much a big deal, and Superintendent George Arlotto said, as we seek to elevate all students and eliminate all gaps, we must address the needs of all of our students. These distinctions are recognition of that work on the part of every one of our staff members at these schools. The Anne Arundel County Fire Department is asking the public's help to identify two people spotted in a video, and they're believed to have been responsible for a dumpster fire set on the grounds of Pasadena Elementary School on January 30th at about 2.40 a.m. 
They were caught on camera on the property, unfortunately not setting the fire, but officials do believe they are responsible for that fire as well as several other small outdoor fires set in the area. They are asking anybody that may have any home video recording systems or may have seen anything unusual in that area that morning or perhaps knows the identity of the people to contact them using the tips line at 410-222-TIPS, T-I-P-S. You want to see that video, head on over to ionanapolis.net. We have that up there for you. I'll say it. This is a stupid bill going through the Maryland State Senate. Senate Bill 237 is going to make motorcyclists and their passengers exempt from wearing a helmet if the motorcycle operator is 21 or older and has at least two years of riding experience and has completed an approved safety course. Now, this legislation has been hanging around since 2016, but it's really failed to advance out of committee. But the lead sponsor, Senator Michael Howe from Frederick, feels that it's got a really good chance this year. Senator Howe said, It's not the role of government to protect you from yourself. As an adult in this country, you should have the freedom to make decisions like this if you want. Uh, Senator, what about seatbelts? Not surprisingly, most highway safety medical organizations oppose this. Also not surprising, the American Motorcycle Association agrees with it. And in a statement on their website, they say that many motorcyclists view the helmet as an accessory of personal apparel and its use or non-use is connected with a chosen lifestyle and their right as adults to make their own decisions. I get that it's not a specific safety piece for a motorcycle, but when you have nothing between you and the pavement, a helmet will save your life. And finally, as we wrap up, boy, Annapolis Town Center has had some ups and downs lately, and they are going through a transformation for sure. And yesterday they announced that they've got a new restaurant coming in where the former Brooks Brothers was, and it is True Food Kitchen. They do have locations currently in Bethesda, Arlington, Fairfax, and another one set to open soon in the Reston Town Center. Really cool place. I have eaten in the one in Bethesda. They serve alcohol. It is generally very healthy food. Their burgers are good. And they will be joining the Annapolis Town Center a little bit later this year, joining Z Gallery, which opened up in January. Now, the town center has really made a bunch of changes. They put fire pits all around. They've got murals by local artists throughout the center. They added a few new events. In addition to the Friday night concert series, they brought in a fall fest, a fire and ice festival, as well as Santa's Cottage. And according to Anthony Henry, who is the Annapolis Town Center's general manager, he said, it is our goal to create a variety of offerings and experiences that today's consumer wants. Whether it be through art, entertainment, dining, or commerce, we have a lot in store for 2020 with new events planned and new businesses joining us. In recent weeks, Brooks Brothers, as well as Brio, have abruptly closed in the Annapolis Town Center. So keep your eye on the Annapolis Town Center. See what's coming up. All right, that does it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net for more information on these stories and more as they come in throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. If you can give us a recommendation or a review someplace, please do that as well. Otherwise, you want to hang tight. We've got Trevor with your Annapolis Makerspace Maker Minutes because it is Thursday. And we also have George Young with your local DMV weather forecast. All that coming up in just about a minute after we hear this brief message from Annapolis Bay Village. What are we going to do about mom? What kind of care does dad need? How much will it cost? Who will take care of them? These are the tough questions that come with aging parents. Bay Village Assisted Living and Memory Care can help. We have the experience and the resources to help you find those answers. To help you gain peace of mind, we can answer the when, the where, the how, and everything in between. Give us a call or stop by for confidential, free assistance. We're here for those conversations, and maybe it's time you were too. Bay Village Assisted Living and Memory Care a new community designed with Annapolis in mind. Visit our sales and information center at 947 Bay Ridge Road or online at bayvillageassistedliving.com. We know these are hard conversations and we're here to help when you need us. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, February 6th. Yesterday was a chilly and gray day with temps near 40 much of the day, along with a rain shower here and there. But today and tomorrow will likely be a step or two backwards from that position as moderate to heavy rain moves across the region in multiple waves, mainly from the p.m. hours today through the a.m. hours on Friday, which is why a flood watch is in effect for the region for likely rainfall totals in the 2 to 4 inch range as areas of low pressure move north 
north-northeastward along a stalled frontal boundary along the east coast. But skies should clear in time for the weekend as that frontal boundary finally pushes south and east of the region, resulting in cool conditions for the weekend with highs in the 40s along with a mixture of sun and clouds and even a small chance of rain and or snow showers late Saturday night into Sunday morning as the small system zips through the mid-Atlantic region. And if you want more rain, we'll probably see more showers next week as well, so put those umbrellas and jackets to good use today and tomorrow, but keep them close by as this month likely shapes up to be another warm one with above-average rainfall as well. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there, and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DCMDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores, and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmdweather.com so you can always stay weather-informed. Hey, Annapolis, Eastern Shore, and Anne Arundel County. My name's Rick Peters, and I'm the president of Solar Energy Services in Millersville, Maryland. Need a new job in the new year to help take you in a different direction? Maybe you aren't feeling fulfilled in your current job and want to be part of the excitement and growth of the clean energy industry. Consider coming to work for Solar Energy Services and give yourself a new career and fresh start at a company that not only offers competitive pay and benefits, but also cares about our employees as much as we care about our customers. That says a lot because we've been in business for over 40 years and we know how to provide five-star service. Visit solarsaves.net or call 410-923-6090 today. We are hiring immediately for solar installers, drafting specialists, and commercial project managers as we prepare for another great year. Are you up for the challenge? Apply today. Sunshine's a waste. Sunshine, sunshine, nothing else can make me feel so fine. Every week, makers, crafters, and educators hold events all over the area. Highlighting some of those, here's our Makers Minute, brought to you by Annapolis Makerspace. Hey, this is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. Saturday and Sunday, as well as next Tuesday, Wine and Design on West Street is doing a chunky blanket workshop with $5 mimosas. And be sure to check out their various painting workshops with themes such as Snowy Beach, Paris in Winter, Art Buzz Kids, Spring Gnome, as well as other events. Tonight at London Town Gardens down in Edgewater, there's a projectile point workshop, the Bob Ogle Collection. This free workshop is for volunteers interested in helping process the Bob Ogle Collection, which includes 13,000 years of Maryland artifacts, especially Native American projectile points and ceramics. Saturday at London Town, they're doing an archaeology lab open house. Drop in on the Anne Arundel County Archaeology Lab on the grounds of historic London Town Gardens for a look into the past. Archaeologists and volunteers at the lab process, identify, and catalog thousands of artifacts from local dig sites all year long. Also on Saturday at London Town, be sure to check out their Saturday lecture series, LGBTQ Plus History in Maryland. Saturday's talk is More Than Friends, the queer chess peak of the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. At Art Things this week, on Monday is a mixed media book binding workshop where you can hand marvel mixed media paper to create a vast array of colorful pages, then bind them into different styles of books and decorate the pages using collage. At the Ray of Light Studios this week, on Tuesday, their sketchbook experience continues. Get started with learning how to draw. Tuesdays in February. And on Wednesday, their watercolor club for teens continues. At Magiana's Little Italy, on Saturday, they're doing a brunch cooking class. Their executive chef will teach you how to make some of their brunch favorites. You'll be amazed at how many ways you can use hollandaise, the science behind poaching the perfect egg, and their famous lemon ricotta pancakes, which are fluffier than any you've ever had. Also, check out their wintertime wine pairing dinner on Tuesday at Local by Design this week at their Annapolis Mall location. Tomorrow, they're doing a wood plank sign workshop. Learn stenciling with Jody Roberts of Cricket Studio. Choose your design and colors and make your own 18 by 6 inch sign. And then on Sunday, also at the Annapolis Mall location, they're doing a winter cookie decorating class. Celebrate the beauty of winter and join Kimberly of Mulberry Treats for some cookie decorating fun. This hands-on two-hour workshop is geared toward beginners and will cover royal icing consistency, piping, as well as flooding. At Art Farm this week, tomorrow they're doing a block printing workshop. Learn how to carve your own block and print onto beautiful paper with block printing artist extraordinaire Anita Hagen. She'll teach you all you need to know. And of course, you can take your block home to continue printing long after the class. Now on Sunday, they're doing another First Exposure Digital Photography Workshop. This is part one of a two-part series, and it includes understanding your camera, aperture and ISO settings, lenses, and creating an exposure. There's also still time to get in on Art Farm's Kids After School Winter Session, with printmaking for ages 8 through 11 on Mondays, art discovery for ages 6 through 8 on Tuesdays, street art lettering for ages 11 through 16 on Wednesdays, and mixed media bookbinding for ages 11 through 15 on Thursdays. At Maryland Hall this week on Saturday, they're doing a Valentine's Family Workshop Acrylic Pour Craft. Everyone is welcome to this one-day acrylic pouring workshop. Each participant will create a heart-shaped acrylic pour painting. 
at the Anne Arundel County Public Library System this week. On Monday in Lenticum is Book Lab, Good Night Already, by Jory John and Benji Davies. Read the book, then talk about it, and work on a STEM project that relates to it for ages 6 through 10. On Monday at Severna Park is their Minecraft Club. On Tuesday in Deal is a Valentine Friendship STEM story time. Tuesday in Odenton is Steam Tuesday with Minecraft. Also on Tuesday in Odenton is Snap Circuits for ages 6 through 10. Snap Circuits are a great way for kids to learn about electronics by simply snapping components together. Wednesday in Crofton is their Nature Explorers Club. And finally on Wednesday at the Eastport Annapolis Neck Library is an evening of conversation with Donna Jackson Nakuzama, author of The Angel and the Assassin, the tiny brain cell that changed the course of medicine. This week at Unallocated Space in Severn, tonight for their InfoSec night, they're doing Pone Your Growth, life hacks leading to career advancement, gain insights on ways you, as a woman in cybersecurity, can hack your way into a successful cyber career. Presented by Jacqueline Blanchard. Tomorrow at Unallocated, DC443 presents GSM, We Can Hear Everyone Now, a DEF CON 27 presentation on GSM hacking from one of the original presenters. On Saturday, they're doing a plastic ant weight combat robot brawl. Battle robots under 450 grams, not much heavier than a can of soup. Made of 3D printed parts. The idea is to have inexpensive robots that can be made and repaired cheaply. Also check out Unallocated Spaces Monday Project Night and Wednesday Open House and Lock Picking Night. At the Paducan Lapidary Guild this week, Saturday they're doing a basic lost wax casting class. Learn the basics of lost wax casting, including sprueing and investing wax patterns, casting and finishing. You'll start with a wax pattern and end with one or two finished pieces of Argentium sterling silver. And finally at Annapolis Makerspace, nothing big going on this week, but we do have our regular woodworking open night on Wednesdays. And Thursday Electronics open night. And if you're looking for me, I'm up there every Thursday night for Electronics Night. And if you have any questions about Annapolis Makerspace, the Maker Minutes, or any of these events, feel free to write me at trevor at makeanapolis.org. And you can find links to all of these events at the Annapolis Makerspace website at makeanapolis.org. And whether you're making art, software, sawdust, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. When a ring from the United States Naval Academy comes into Zachary's for a center stone, it always makes us wonder. Where's this one going? Where's this one been? A nuclear sub in the North Atlantic? A carrier deck in the South Pacific? The moon? 52 astronauts are Academy graduates. From Iwo Jima to Okinawa. Corregidor to the Coral Sea. Midway to the Persian Gulf. Congress to the White House. These rings go where America goes. 73 that went to war were awarded the Medal of Honor. But wherever they go, wherever they may serve, our admiration goes with them. Zachary's. Online at Zachary'sJewelers.com. More than a jewelry store, a jeweler. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.